Day two is evaluating piecewise functions. Warm up. The cost of parking in a garage in dollars can be modeled by a step function whose graph is shown. A, how much does it cost to park for three hours and 45 minutes? All right, so we can see time is the independent variable and it's on the bottom. And so for three hours and 45 minutes, that would put us somewhere in here. And we can see that that cost the output or dependent variable is $6. B, how long can you stay in the ramp and only have to pay $1? So if we take a look, and when you take a look at this, the open circle means um, it starts there but doesn't include it. And then the filled in circles mean, means it does include it. So for $1, we can stay in the parking lot up to one hour. And then at one hour, right after that, it jumps to $4. So one hour. What is the domain of this step function? All right, so domain is all possible x values. So it starts at zero, but doesn't include zero. So zero, and then we'll put the x. And then if you notice, it keeps going. Um, so we can say that x is greater than zero. You can reverse it and just say, um, so it's, it's, the way that I wrote it, it's zero is less than x, but usually when it's just one letter, we put that first and x is greater than zero. So there's the domain. The range is what are all possible y values. And so we can see that it starts at $1 and it goes up to $10 and that's where it stops and it can, can include $10 and range is the y value. And so we say y is in between $1 and $10. So just a quick review of domain and range. Domain is all possible x values, and range is all possible y values. It's called the step function, as you can see, because it looks like steps here. OK, so learning target today is can you evaluate a piecewise function, a step function being an example of a piecewise function, how it's broken into pieces depending on the domain. So here's an example of one. Um, both graphically, you can see that we have a line. You can see that we have a parabola and another line. Here's what it looks like. Here's the actual function. I'll highlight in um, green right here. So here's the function. It's 2x plus 8 when x is less than or equal to negative 2. I should actually highlight it maybe in red. OK, here's the red, the red function. So there's that first one when x is less than or equal to 2. So there it is. Um, and then it's x squared minus 3, there's the parabola when it's between negative 2 and 3. And then it's the square root function. Um, I think I was going to use color here. So this is the blue function as the parabola. And then the square root function is the green when x is greater than 3. And we should put the dots in because Desmos doesn't do that. So when x is less than or equal to 2, so it should be a filled in dot right here. And then an open dot at negative 2 because, again, it's the red function at negative 2. And then it goes up to and includes negative 3. We should have a closed dot. And then um, when it's bigger than 3, uh, an open dot right there. Did I make that big enough? Yeah, that's big enough. And then I should put an arrow at the end right here, and an arrow at the end right here. OK, so they wrote it out again here. Again, you can see in Desmos, they put the domain in these curly brackets, and the function is, is right outside that. Here's what it looks like algebraically. We can see a comma, and then we can see that here's the domain here. And then we would plug in the function to get the range. All right, so algebraically, can you just evaluate the function with the given information? So this is saying when x is negative 4, what's the output f of negative 4? So when x is negative 4, which is less than negative 2, we're going to use this function right here. So 2x plus 8. So 2 times, and we'll plug in negative 4 for x plus 8. And that would be negative 8 plus 8, which is 0. So we say f of negative 4 equals 0. That's how we evaluate it, just by plugging in. We could have also looked at the graph. When f is negative 4, look, you can see on the graph that x, uh, the y value is 0. Let's try the next one. When f is 6, OK, so 6 is bigger than 3. So we're going to use this function right here. So it'll be the square root of, instead of x, we'll write the 6. 
So 6 plus 3, the square root of 6 plus 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3. So we say f of 6 equals 3. Again, we can read the graph. We can go over to 6 and then go up to our graph and then over again. And we can see that, yes, that is at 3 right there. Okay, and let's do f of negative 2. Okay, negative 2 is less than or equal to negative 2. So here's the function that we're going to use. Let's change colors here. So it'll be this 2x plus 8. Instead of x, we'll plug in the negative 2. We'll add it to 8. This is negative 4 plus 8, which is 4. So we say f of negative 2. When we plug in a negative 2, the output is 4. We can test it. So here's negative 2, and we can see that output is indeed 4. So we can do it off the graph or just looking at the function notation. And our last one, f of 0. Okay, let's find that one. And again, I'll switch colors here. Let's use green. Sorry, it's this. Okay, so f of 0, and that's in between negative 2 and 3. It's this x squared minus 3. Oh, I should plug in a 0, so it's 0 squared minus 3. 0 squared is 0. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So when you plug in a 0, the y value of the output is negative 3. And we can test it. Here's when the x value is 0, and you can see, yep, that does go to negative 3 right there. So the goal for today is if I give you a piecewise function either in a graph or written as an algebra equation, algebra equations here that you can plug in, look at what the domain, where the domain is, and then use that to find um, the output value. Okay, so let's just do a few more, um, and then your assignment will be to practice this today. So number one, evaluate the function. Okay, so this is graphically, and they want f of 5. So this is saying when the x value is 5, when the input is 5, what's the output? So here's 5, and we can see that there's a dot there, <laughs> um, and that output, if it's just that dot, would be at 2, because these are open right here, so it's not those dots, it's just this dot right here, and so that would be 2. Okay, let's try the next one. Okay, so this one is find f of negative 2. Okay, so go to negative 2. Go up or down until you hit the graph, and it goes up this time when we hit the parabola, and if we go over, that is 3. Okay, and then our last one, again, it's piecewise. You can see all the different pieces, um, and later this week we'll take a look at how would you write the equation for this, but today it's just evaluate. Find f of negative 3, so we're going to go left 3, go down till we hit the graph, and go over to see the output, and here it's negative 3 as well. Okay, so your goal today is can you evaluate the function graphically, also algebraically, um, and again, we'll practice putting it into context, and then you can see as we look ahead that we'll also um, be looking at can we write the equations uh, from graphs.